The relative impotence of the Luftwaffe's bomber force in the West to carry out any sort of effective bombing campaign against the British Isles from 1942 onwards made the attraction of a fast unmanned flying bomb irresistible to Adolf Hitler. In the Fiesler Fi-103, he had at last the Vergaltungswaffe, or revenge weapon, with which he could hit back and retaliate for the increasingly devastating raids conducted by RAF Bomber Command on German cities. Powered by an Argus Pulse jet engine producing just 740 pounds of thrust, the newly christened V-1 could carry a warhead of 1,870 pounds on a fuel load that would give it half an hour's flight time at about 400 miles an hour at an altitude of up to 4,000 feet. After trials at Peenemunde on the Baltic, the V-1 was released for service in 1943. The missile was launched from a long ascending ramp using a device powered by the same fuels used by the ME-163. Scheduled to begin operations in December 1943, it was only on the 13th of June 1944, and a week after the landings in Normandy, that the first V-1 launched from the Pas de Calais began a German rocket bombardment of London that was to last until the 5th of September. The first missile to reach the environs of London crashed on empty ground. In the face of a mounting campaign of robot bombardment, British countermeasures focused initially on the provision of massed anti-aircraft batteries along the approach routes of the planes. Detachments of heavy 3.7-inch anti-aircraft guns, supported by the lighter 40mm Bofors, expended large quantities of ammunition in their bid to shoot down the V-1s. Although sometimes successful, the number of hits increased only when radar was able to provide fire control for the guns. A measure of the intensity of V-1 operations was that, in their second period of launchings between the 15th of June and the end of that month, no fewer than 2,442 were launched at London. Crashes and guns accounted for about one-third of these over the Channel. Another third either crashed or were brought down over southern England, while the remaining third, approximating to about 800 missiles, impacted on targets in and around London. For the inhabitants of southern England and London, the arrival of a V-1 was signalled by the growing growl of its Argus pulse engine, which prompted the natives to nickname the type the Buzz Bomb. The psychological effect of the weapon was enhanced by its totally indiscriminate nature. It fell to earth only when its fuel ran out, this being signalled by its sudden silence before it impacted with the ground in a great explosion. Although the populace of London displayed the same stoicism as in the Blitz of 1940-41, the V1 still accounted for 2,441 deaths and 7,107 cases of serious injury during the campaign as a result of an average of 53 missiles being launched each day against Britain's capital city. Even so, British intelligence was able to shift the targeting of the V-1s by feeding false information of damage to the Germans to help ease the bombardment. Aerial countermeasures provided by the RAF against the V-1 included the first use of the Gloucester Meteor F-1 jet fighter. Piston engine types employed to shoot down the robot aircraft included the superlative Hawk of Tempest and Spitfire Mark 14s, with the latter responsible for shooting down over 300 of the buzz bombs. Restricted as they were to launch sites in the Pas de Calais by virtue of the limited range of the V-1s, the initial fixed ramps had been targeted and destroyed by Allied bombing even before D-Day. With the capture of that region by British and Canadian ground forces in September, the V-1 bombardment ended. However, the suffering of London was not yet over as the Germans began use of a new weapon.